TypeScript is a great programming language, and today I will show you how it can help you to type your errors. If you have a try block with a catch and an error inside, then this error will be by default of type any. And why is that? The thing is that from the beginning, TypeScript can actually not know what your error is, because when you go, for example, in the logic of your code, then there could be cases where your code throws an error, like a real instance of the error class. And let's add some error message here. But by the nature of JavaScript, parts of your code could also throw a number, for example, an error code. Let's use 404 here. And both cases are valid. But other parts can also just throw an error message. So there are many different types that can be thrown, and in the catch class, all things can then pile up, and TypeScript just says, okay, anything can end up here. And when you want to add, for example, a specific typing, then TypeScript will complain. There will be error TS1196, and it tells you that the catch class must be of type any or unknown. So let's use any here then anything is allowed. This can be very problematic. For example, if you have an error and then a response, and then let's say you try to access ABC and XYZ, and given that ABC doesn't exist, because I just made it up, and then calling XYZ on this non-existing ABC will result in an error, because TypeScript will then, or JavaScript in the end, will tell you that it cannot call x, y, z on ABC. And that's then very problematic because your code in production will never run into these uh, statements here and will already crash on the if statement. So that's why any should be avoided. And if you use unknown, then you cannot access any property because uh, TypeScript here doesn't know what, um, what it is. And uh, that's why it also says, well, it's unknown, I don't know what it is, so I don't know if it has this response um, property. So both cases, any and unknown, are not ideal. And it would be very cool if we could tell TypeScript what that error actually is. But how to do that? We can do that by using a concept which is called TypeGuard. A TypeGuard is a statement that helps TypeScript to identify the type of your object. And there are different scenarios and also different solutions. And one solution that I want to present to you today is using a type predicate. How to define such a type predicate? Let's have a look at the official TypeScript documentation because there are some examples. And a type predicate is actually just a function that checks something and the something can be of any type. And this function here does then a test. And if this test, if this condition returns true, then the TypeScript compiler knows that uh, the parameter that was passed to it is of a specific type. That's why there is this is keyword, which may look new to you. And this is then says, okay, if the condition here is passed, if it is true, then the x that was passed to it is a number. And we will write something similar now for our catch case here to then also have the compiler telling us which properties are accessible of this error here. In my code, I'm actually using a request library, which is called Axios. Here you can look it up on GitHub. And this Axios request library is very helpful because you can make promise-based requests to a server and you will get then the response. And if the response is negative, so if the server, for example, returns a 404 or any other error code, then Axios is so smart that it actually enriches this error and gives it back to the user or the programmer in this case. And this error, as we can see in the documentation, can then contain, for example, a response. And this response then has data or status code or some HTTP headers. So you can then actually 
on this error access some properties and it would be cool to know in the code here that these properties are available. So I will write a type guard now and I will go back to the documentation to then uh, look up how to write one. So first we need a function, I will copy over the function keyword and then um, we call it is axios error and we give something to it. This something can be of any type like our our error here and then we say okay if the check from this function is passed then this uh, something is an axios error. So the function um, head is here. Yeah, We have the signature ready. Now we need to write the condition. The condition will be that we return if something is an axios error. So how to do that? Um, luckily, we are very lucky in this case, the axios error here, let me look it up in the um, type definitions, the axios error here has a property which is called is axios error. So I can make use of this property and I can go back to my something and my something has the property is axios error and if it equals true then my function here evaluates to true and tells the TypeScript compiler that something is an access error. And that is all it takes to write such um, a type predicate. Let me mark it correctly here, <laughs> such a type predicate. So we can um, use this function now. Here in my if block, I was checking if there is an error response, but now I will be smarter. I will name the function is access error. I will use that function and I give it then my error and now we will see the big benefit of a type guard. So the type guard now ensures that when this function here returns true, so when a check is passed, it guards then the type of that um, error within the uh, body of the if block. Which means that in the beginning our error here is of type any then when we pass it to the condition it still has the any type but if this here evaluates to true within then this body we will see that the error is now of type access error and this is what we gain from the type guard. On the outside this um, type is not guarded, yeah, it's not safe because uh, when this condition is not matched or if we are not sure if that matches like for example here in the logging statement there the error then still has the any type. But within the positive condition, we know then that it is an access error. And now I can inspect its properties. If I jump to the response property, I will see here the access error response. Response is of type access response. And here I see that there is, let's go back to the um, code, that there is no notifications property which is the one that I wanted to call. And I see that the response here only has data, status, status text, headers, config, and request. So no notifications, which gives me already an error here. And if I check now the data, because actually I wanted to um, query data, then uh, my code evaluates fine and I don't get any compiler warning anymore and I just fixed actually an error in my code. And this is something where I say that type guards can be very, very beneficial because of the better typing now, I am less likely to make uh, mistakes by accessing properties that don't exist. So please give it a try. And if you're interested in more best practices with TypeScript, just subscribe to the TypeScript TV YouTube channel.